Okay, everyone, I'm back and we're going to work on page four and five and they're going to be mirror images of each other, just like um, a lot of the album. And um, we're going to have a pocket and two flaps. So the top flap is going to be five and a half by seven. So it's five and a half by seven. You're going to score a half inch, the five and a half inch side. The second one is seven and a half by seven. Score a half inch on the seven inch side. And the last piece is our pocket three and a half by eight. And I'll go over these again as we're actually installing them. I'm going to start by laying down my pocket. Now this is page four, which means that the spine is here and the open side of the book is here. So I want my insert um, on this side. So as I pull it out, I'm not running into my spine area. Well, I hope everybody's doing good. We had kind of a wet day today, which is unusual. Okay, so I'm applying this three and a half by eight, score half inch on three sides to the, um, the right hand side of page four. Okay, there we go. And now we have two flaps. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. So you could install them stacked on top of each other like this, which I don't like the look of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the second flap, turn it over, and I'm actually going to apply it to the inside of the top flap like that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And that way on the outside of the book, you're only going to see uh, a single hinge, okay? I'm going to lay it down like so. And, sorry, laying it down. Let me get this out of our field of vision. Underneath it, making sure it's top to bottom that it's even, and then I'm just going to close the flap. And this way, it makes sure um, that the flap and the second hinge are far enough away from the score line that there's no interference. Okay, that's it. So it's just a different way of um, stacking your flaps. I like it because I like a single edge, oh, if I can, if I, if possible. Ugh, having a hard time talking. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, install this flush with the left hand side. Oh, I need to clean my glasses. Sorry, guys. Seeing shadows. Okay, so that's flap one. Up two and pocket. Doesn't that look nice? So basically you're seeing a two inch graduation across the two. Now I'm going to do the same thing on page five, which is right here. And I'll start with the pocket and it's going to go on the left hand side. There we go. Did I do that wrong? Yes, I did. It's supposed to be on the left hand side. I even said it, but didn't do it. So I'm going to see if I can't lift it. If not, I'm going to use my undo. And what I can do while I'm waiting for my undo, let's do the undo, is um, go ahead and start decorating um, page four. I'm going to lift it and move it to the right side because uh, th this uh, page four and five are designed to work together. So if I don't move it over, the whole page design kind of goes out the window. So I'm going to let that um, work its magic for a few minutes. And then I'll come back to it and use my spatula to try to lift it. Okay, now it's time to line up my designer papers and get them inked and I'll be back. Hey everyone. Okay, I've got my papers lined up and I was thinking about putting a, a reach over to keep everything closed, but I don't like the way it's um, cutting my design uh, designer paper in half. So I'm going to use uh, multiple magnets to hold everything together, which I don't like to do. I like to try to limit it to one set per page layout, 
but that's just not working out. Um, when I tried to run a bar across that design, it just kind of ruined the whole aesthetic. So this is what we're doing. So I'm going to go on this side. And we're going to put the opposing magnet in the pocket. And I, I have a one inch um, span or overlay from the flap to the pocket. So hopefully that's going to be sufficient, but we are going to find that out in just a second. That's awfully tight. Oof. Oh, you know what? I can turn it around. Okay, we're going to do it the other way. I think I can adjust it just by the tape. Yeah, there it is. So now you can see I've got plenty of room to get my paper down around the magnet. My tape was just too far over on one side. So that's fixed. And then the next thing we're going to do is put a magnet here. And of course, everything I'm doing here is going to also be uh, on the page five. Okay, I'm using my 5 8 inch tape. I'm not doing any color blocking here, so I don't have to really think about magnet placement so much. Okay, here we go. Okay, isn't that lovely? We are going to do a little bit of color blocking on the inside, I think. I'm kind of going back and forth. So this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And like I said, what I'm doing on uh, page four, I'm also gonna do on page five, it's just gonna be a mirror image. I'm stalling because I'm looking for a piece of white cardstock so I can see the edge. There we go. Okay, that looks nice. I, I saved this pattern for the middle of the book because it's so pretty. Okay. And then set this aside for a second. Let's focus on getting the pocket in. Okay, I'm going to use this too so I can see the edge of the pocket. I had to get these ballerina slippers in there somehow. That's pretty tight. Okay, now here I've got a couple of options. Um, originally I had trimmed this out and it was going to go here and this was going to go here and I didn't like that flow so I changed it so this is going to go here. This is from the 8x8 collection. Yep. And since I had already trimmed that out I had to save part of this to go on the opposing flap. There we go. Isn't that pretty? And then this is the cut apart that's going to go into this pocket, which is the story. Okay, and then on this side, I, I'm going to reintroduce um, the ballerinas. So now what I need to do is figure out how much of this strip I want here. And I think 
that looks pretty good. And it is, just so you know, um, it's about one and three quarters. But basically I took my eight by eight and I trimmed this down to six and a quarter so it went slightly, or six and one eighth, so it went slightly into the pocket. And then this is the strip that was left. So I'm just gonna lay this down, trim this last piece to fit. Okay, so that's it. So the last thing, and part of the reason I put it over here rather than here is because I have to deal with the magnet. And I'd rather do that on a larger piece of paper. So I'm gonna mark this, trim it, and then we'll be done with this part of the page. Okay. Aren't these slippers pretty? I love them. I think they're gorgeous. Just re ink on the side I trimmed. You can do this, but I'm, I really want to bring the slippers back in. It's very crooked. I'm going to have to straighten that out. I don't know. Oh, because it's upside down. That's why. That's why. I was going to say, how can I be so far off? It's I cut a slight curve in it because this, it just, your tolerances start to stack up and then you start to see issues. So anyways, there we go. And then we are going to put... this in here and then we have one last thing to do and that's this and so right now we have a decision to make in terms of what pattern is going to go here am I going to use this pattern or do I want this pattern and I like both but I think ballerina ballerina and slippers may be too much so I'm going to go with this pattern let me look at it for a second Sometimes it's so hard to decide. I don't know. I think I like this. So one of the things I want to let you know too is this top panel is four and a half. That means it's four inches finished. Um, so the smallest panel that you have to put pictures on is four inches across and seven inches tall. And then the graduating ones get bigger. So the reason I try to keep my smallest panel to four inches wide is to accommodate a typical four by six photo um, that if you put a slight crop on would still fit there or on the inside, which is where I would recommend putting the photos. Keep the designer paper as a display and the photos on the inside, particularly in this design. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So when you have a cascade like this, to me, it looks odd. I'm trying to find something small. When you have a photograph that's partially exposed. So imagine that as being a photograph of someone. Here is someone. And it's partially exposed. That just seems kind of odd. That's why I would tend to put some of the photos here and then on this side, um, place my four by six so that it's actually behind this. It's it's a choice, and I think depending on the photo that you're trying to place, you can make that decision. Sometimes the photo itself lends itself to the patterns, then it looks great. Okay, here I'm going to use the flip side. I think this is very pretty. Okay. 
Okay, that's it. And I'm going to go ahead and go offline and finish page five, and then I'm going to set them side by side so you can see what the finished product looks like. But that is it for page four. And I think this turned out really pretty to go in here, just tan on tan. And then over here, this makes for a nice photo placement. I like having a split. It just makes it more interesting behind the photo. Okay, I'll be back shortly.